if we in America will repent of our sins and turn to the Lord, God will spare us. If we don't, the judgments will continue. And I'm saying the judgments will continue because we're under judgment right now. The events of this past year and the events of this present hour would indicate to me that we're already experiencing judgment upon judgment upon judgment that will continue unless we turn to God. We're dealing with the living God. And our God is a consuming fire, the scripture says. But that's true in your life as a person, as an individual. God knows your sins. You, you can't hide them from him. There's no use trying to cover up. You see, the first big cover-up in history was Adam and Eve. They tried to cover their sins with fig leaves. Every man that's ever committed a sin has tried to cover it up. But we cannot cover from the x-ray eyes of God. He sees, he knows, and he's going to judge us. You say, well, Billy, I'm feeling fine. I haven't been judged yet. Ah, yes, but that day of judgment is yet to come. There's going to be a future day of judgment when everything you've ever done and everything you've ever said and everything you've ever thought is going to be brought to light. And God has his computers and he has his cameras and he has it all stacked away. And it'll all be brought out, even the thought processes of your mind. Secondly, he says, thou art weighed in the balances and found one. The scripture says, Thou dost weigh the paths of the just. The Lord says, By the Lord actions are weighed. All the ways of a man are clear in his own eyes, but the Lord weigheth the spirit. The nation, the world tonight is being weighed. You are being weighed in the balances of God. Our sins are great in the eyes of the Lord, and we're being weighed in his balances. And many thinking leaders believe that the handwriting is already on the wall and the judgment is already beginning to take place. But God weighs us as individuals. What's he going to weigh us by? What's on the other side of the scales? You see, here's the scales. Here's you, and here's what God weighs you by. First, he'll weigh you by the Ten Commandments. How do you stand up with the Ten Commandments? Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not lie. Thou shalt not murder. All of these are taken in the Ten Commandments. And the Bible says if we offend in one point, we are guilty of all. If you've broken one commandment one time in your life, it's the same as breaking all of them. Well, you say, well, of course I've broken at least one or two of them. Well, then you're guilty of all. And that's the reason the Bible says we're all guilty. That's the reason Jesus said, you that are without sin, pick up the first stone and throw it at this woman taken in adultery. None of these religious leaders could do it because we all have sin. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And all are under the judgment of God. Then not only are we going to be weighed by the Ten Commandments, but we're going to be weighed by the law of love. Matthew 22, Jesus said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments, said Jesus, hang all the law and all the teaching of the prophets. It's all summed up in love. Do you love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul? And do you love your neighbor? Now, your neighbor means anybody that's in need. Jesus taught that in the parable of the Good Samaritan. Anyone who's in need, you love that neighbor as much as you love yourself. That's what Jesus said. We're going to be weighed by that law. Thirdly, we're going to be weighed by the person of Jesus Christ. 
The Bible says in Psalm 89, For who in the heaven can be compared unto the Lord? Who among the sons of the mighty can be likened unto the Lord? Isaiah said, To whom will be likened me, and make me evil or equal, and compare me, that they should be like me? God says, Be ye holy, for so I am holy. If you don't, now Jesus Christ was the only righteous and the only holy man that ever lived. We call some people in India holy men. But Jesus was the only truly holy man of history. And if we don't live like Jesus and live as good as Jesus is, then we come short of God's requirement and God's expectation when you say, Billy, who in the world can live like Jesus? Nobody. That's the reason you all have to say, I'm a sinner. God is going to weigh us by Christ. He's going to weigh us by the Ten Commandments. He's going to weigh us by the law of love. But he's also going to weigh you by your works. Those sins of omission that you weren't even conscious of. In Matthew 25, Jesus reminds us, For I was a hungered, and you gave me no meat. I was thirsty, you didn't give me anything to drink. I was a stranger, and you didn't take me in. I was naked and you didn't clothe me. I was sick and in prison and you never came and visited me. But the people will say, Lord, where, we, where did we see you naked and sick and in prison and thirsty? Then he answered them this way. Inasmuch as you did it not to one of the least of these, you did it not to me. Now that strikes every person in this arena. And we come short. And then Jesus pronounced judgment. He said, those that are guilty of the sin of omission and these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous unto life eternal. You say, well, Billy, I'm sort of devastated. How can any of us weigh up? We can't. Jesus said in Revelation 3, I know your works that you're neither hot nor cold. I would that you were hot or cold. So then because you're lukewarm, I'm going to spew you out of my mouth, he said. Listen, there are going to be a lot of people that are going to miss heaven that you think are going to be there. And then fifthly, he's going to weigh us by our opportunities by our opportunities to whom much is given much shall be required he said think of living in america with all of its advantages a church on almost every corner a bible in almost every hotel room millions of bibles available the gospel by radio and television think of living here He's going to judge us by the opportunities we had. Think of the Christian literature that's available at bookstores. And we don't take advantage of it. To whom much is given, much is required. You say, well, Billy, even on that score, I, <laughs> I can't make it. No. But the glory of this whole thing is that there is a gospel and the gospel is good news to people like you who are sitting there saying, well, I'm guilty. The good news is that God sent his son, Jesus Christ, to the cross to die for you. And God took those sins of yours and those failures of yours and laid them on Christ. He became sin for us. Now he said, the just and the righteous are going to get to heaven. How am I going to get a justness and a righteousness of my own when I don't have any? I'm a sinner. I don't weigh enough to get to heaven. But on the cross, Christ provided a justness for me. He provided a righteousness for me that I didn't have. And I am acceptable tonight by God 
not because I've been good or because I've read the Bible or because I've preached to crowds of people. I'm acceptable because of Christ. I am accepted into the beloved because of him. And that's your privilege at this moment. You can appropriate what Christ did on the cross to you right now, and you can leave here weighing enough to get to heaven, weighing enough to have your sins forgiven, weighing enough to live a new life. Thou art weighed in the balances of God and found wanting. Are you found wanting? The last word here is Eupharson, divided. Thy kingdom is divided. God said, Belshazzar, I'm taking your kingdom away from you. You're finished. Judgment has come. It's too late. Is God going to say that to you? Judgment has come. It's too late. I know people that know that and accept that and believe that and just go on merrily dancing their way to hell. They're like the mouse that's been caught in the trap that's still nibbling at the cheese after being caught. You're still nibbling at the devil's bait. And you're already dead as far as eternity is concerned. I believe this crusade has been held at the right time and in the providence of God at the right moment in the history of many of your lives. People have prayed for you. People have worked. People have given to make this possible. And now this is your moment with God to receive him into your heart. 